Hey, what's up? Ken from Palm Beach Dino here. Behind me, you see the world's fastest Explorer ST. Uh, as I can tell by the views on our last video on this vehicle, it's a very popular application. I've heard that one in five Explorers right now sold are the ST. And uh, that's because this is uh, not only an awesome SUV that we're used to using, but uh, you know, for family stuff and taking kids everywhere and picking up stuff at the hardware store and just general use, but this is a legitimate performance platform now. It's a rear wheel drive based, uh, 10 speed transmission, makes incredible power. Uh, you've seen this on the internet going 12.2 at 112, it's actually been uh, 12.1 at 113 now, but the one spot that Ford came up short, and it's a spot that they come up short in many EcoBoost vehicles, is the intercooler. We were seeing temperatures well, uh, well, approaching 200 degrees air temps going into the engine, and looking at the factory one on this, uh, it makes sense. It's very small. So, we've got a solution now. In fact, this is a prototype from our buddies over at Whipple Superchargers. Look at this piece. Honestly, I just took it out of the box and I'm not even sure. I believe this is the way it mounts uh, in the vehicle. So it's got ton of surface area. It's a little on the thin side because of room, but they made up for that in uh, how large it is. So what we're gonna do is, RareFab is gonna get this uh, installed uh, and then we're gonna take the car back to the track and see what kind of gains we can get. And we'll also do some tests on the street, which is important to most of you and see what kind of temps we see on the street compared to what we were seeing. So anyway, let's see this thing installed then we'll uh, take it over to RareFab and see what's involved. Okay, there you go. As you can see from the video, it's a little bit of an involved install. Um, something you may want to tackle on your own, or you can obviously take it to a great shop like RareFab next door. It's probably a two to three hour job uh, at the least for you guys. Uh, one to two hours for us doing it here since we've already done one. Um, the uh, install fit, the brackets, everything was awesome. Uh, for those of you that don't know, if I didn't say earlier in the video, this is the very first one to be bolted to an Explorer ST. Um, now, right now I'm doing this video quite a bit uh, since uh, the opening of the video and the install of the, the video due to uh, what's going on currently in the world. Um, we had some delays and I'm just now getting around to finishing this up so Brian can pick it up. So, unfortunately, we won't be doing any quarter mile times in this particular video. But when the world starts moving again and tracks open, we'll get it to the track for sure. But what we, well, what I already have done is um, now this vehicle runs on E85 and 93 octane. Uh, I didn't, I wasn't able to get any of this video due to the rush of things. Uh, <clears throat> but we did get the 93 tuned, redialed in with the intercooler, and we were able to find some, uh, some. Pretty significant performance now, uh, and for, as a reference in the current weather that we normally see in South Florida this time of year, 83 degrees or so, 80 to, I mean it was 90 the other day, so we'll call it like 85 degrees. 
this thing on our 93 tune would probably run like a 4849. Uh, and now, with the intercooler and the upgraded tune, uh, we've already seen four fives in 83 degree weather, and most likely I would think like in the four three range, zero to 60 on 93. Um, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna jump in the truck. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about everything, and we'll go ahead and try a zero to 60 with E85 real quick. Um, again, it may not be the most optimal conditions outside right now. It's mid 80s. Uh, the road we do this on isn't great. Uh, the truck has things in it. It's not light. These are real world numbers that you're going to see out of this. Now, obviously, we can find the best prep surface and maybe put some stuff down on the pavement and make it hook. All those sorts of things. And, you know, who knows uh, what we would do. And I guess running a draggy at the drag strip would tell you that number. Uh, but most of you guys don't even go to the drag strip with these vehicles. They're just fun street cars and you want to see what they do on the street. So measuring things with the drag is perfect in that instance. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and try a 0 to 60 and see what it does. All right, we're all set up and the Explorer ST. I just switched it over to sport mode. Now, let's go over this uh, video is obviously about uh, the intercooler, but those of you that are interested in the intercooler are probably interested and maximum performance anyway so let's go over this truck one more time it has the uh, high pressure fuel pump from extreme di it has the intercooler now and it runs on 85 right now it doesn't have to run on 85 but it does right now um, so that's it okay so what does an intercooler do now i'm gonna for those of you that know a little bit about this tech, just stand by. I want to explain this for the people that are new to this, right? A lot of people are buying these vehicles and maybe this is their first performance vehicle just as much as a vehicle. This is a good example. The opposite is uh, the guy that owns this vehicle has a twin turbo uh, Mustang GT. This vehicle is actually his wife's and they both enjoy performance. So he's souping this one up. But for those of you that are new to this, an intercooler cools the air off after the turbocharger turbochargers in this case this vehicle has two turbochargers and when you compress air it creates heat so what do you do uh, to get rid of some of that heat you have an intercooler and what that looks like although it doesn't function exactly the same way is it looks like a big radiator which you've seen earlier in this video so the air runs through that uh, and then goes through the core of the intercooler and that allows uh, the air passing over the core to cool the air so there's a lot that goes into intercooler design and we're not gonna make this a hardcore tech video, but in general, the larger the intercooler, the more cooling you're gonna get, cooling you're gonna get. So, uh, you, you know, I showed you the stock one versus um, the Whipple one, it's just not even close. So what does that equate to in real world performance? Because that's what's important. A lot of the times I've been doing this a long time and people uh, release products like this and they're marginal improvement, but maybe not as much as you know you would like for the money invested not the case with this um, while Ford has built us the baddest Explorer ever especially considering it's rear-wheel drive based the intercooler is extra deficient on this setup for a few reasons it's really buried back in this the setup of the front end that's one and two is it's really small so what do you have to consider on an intercooler is how much airflow you're going to get over it and also the size so we only have so much control over how much airflow gets over the intercooler if we want to not modify the vehicle too much um, so what Whipple did was they left the intercooler in the same location and it extended it taller uh, and what that did is, is it allows the factory shutters to work and all that sort of thing which is actually better for the intercooler because it seals off the area around the intercooler and forces it through the intercooler um, so what does it work out to real world numbers? Okay, so we do a lot of zero to 60 testing with this and a lot of people might ask, well, why are you doing so much zero to 60 testing and not as much quarter mile testing? Well, in this particular video is because all the tracks are closed due to the shutdown. But in general, a lot of people that drive this vehicle and want tunes for this vehicle, they're doing this stuff on the street. So they don't, you know, the quarter mile time may not be relevant to them, but zero to 60 is, and that really does equate to what fun you can have on the street. So what we're gonna do is, is I'm gonna turn around right here, and we're gonna do a zero to 60, and then we'll go over the actual temperature differences between the factory intercooler and the stock intercooler.
man, that, that was a good one. Let's see what we got. 3.9, and I spun a little bit there, so I don't know the exact number. It could be 3.8 and change. We'll go ahead and try it again. All right, that was actually a 3.88. We're gonna try it one more time. I think I can get a little bit better. Let's see what we got. All right. Let's see the exact number here. 3.82. All right. That's another good one. Let's try one more. Let's see if we can get a 3.7 out of it. All right. You know, it's low 80s, middle of the day, 3 o'clock. The street here is very poor. This is uh, real world conditions and this is the same place I test the truck all the time. So before, the best we would get, I think in the morning once, uh, we were able to get a 3.9, which you guys have seen in the video. But on average, the thing would do a 4.0 to 4.1. Now, in the middle of the day, just ran 3.8. And uh, I'll try it again later tonight, right before Brian picks the vehicle back up after the temps drop down a little bit to see if we can get it into the three sevens. I really feel like we can. Um, anyway, let's talk about the temps. The temps before on a pull like this from zero to 60 would get as high as 160 degrees and in the quarter mile even higher. Well, due to heat soak and everything uh, and you don't have air running over the vehicle, when you're driving slow, it could get as high as 140. But the minute you start moving, the temperatures go down, and by the time you hit 60 miles an hour, it's 110 degrees versus 160 degrees with the stock cooler. So you're talking about a 50 degree change at 60 miles an hour, and obviously if you're really hitting this thing hard, say at the quarter mile, it's only gonna be better. So anyway, please subscribe to the channel. Um, this intercooler, for those that, of you that are interested in it, we are now taking a waiting list only, no money collected uh, due to the current environment uh, with what's going on in the world. It's unsure exactly when we'll be able to ship them. So what I did is, is I went ahead and ordered a bunch of them, paid for them, but you guys, don't need to pay for them until I have them in my hands ready to ship and then the minute I have them I will start going down the waiting list from the first person all the way down until I run out of intercoolers I'm not sure how many I'm gonna get uh, in this first batch so make sure you get on that list right away it's already big for those of you that want to get this information as soon as possible you should also subscribe to us on Facebook uh, we do a lot of quick announcements there and one of them was the waiting list for this so if you missed out on that make sure you get on our Facebook and, and Instagram we'll try to post these things in our community section on YouTube it doesn't seem like that many people pay attention to that uh, but we'll try to get it out there better for you guys the next time anyway we'll see you on the next one